We previously talked about proportional control, and now we're going to talk about integral and derivative control. And we looked at a system where we had to move a position, the position of a snack to a specific location, VREF, so that a poro could eat it. And this could be any system. But this is our system that we modeled, right? So we found a value for a transfer function for the plant. And now we've, we've, we did one control proportional, but I want to introduce two other basic controls and they're called integral and derivative. So first, let's look at integral control. The basic idea is that this one, so with time, we're looking at how our position changes or how we change our position. Before with proportional, if we started, say we started at this point, and this is our v ref, y ref, sorry. Then before we looked at the error and we created an input based on a proportion, just some constant, base times the error. With integral control, the basic idea is that, so you have a system that kind of oscillates, maybe a little bit here, then goes to the point. The basic idea here is that we actually look at the integral of the error. So here the error is, you know, initially it has a positive value here, right, because our error is y ref minus the y. So here we have some value. And then over time, it'll cross zero, cross our reference point. And if we keep calculating the integral, then whenever it's on below for too long, we can correct it. And over for too long, it'll correct itself as well. So this is a type of control where we look at the integral of it and then we use that as our input. So to write that out, the input into this system, instead of being proportional to the error itself, it's proportional to the integral of the error over time. And when we take the Laplace transform of this, we get u equals k 1 over s because it's the integral and e when we put this into our control form, we want the output u over the input e, and so we simply get k one over s. So this is our basic control for integral. Control, this is a transfer function for that. So the control then for derivative control, pretty self-explanatory actually. The only thing we change is instead of it being the integral of e, we actually look at the derivative of e. So this would be looking at the signal, so looking at the slope of it and changing our input based on the slope of that. So all that really changes here is dE dt, and when we take our Laplace, instead of 1 over s, we end up getting an s. And then here, so I'll just write it down here, so we have 2 to compare. So it's simply k times s here. So this is derivative control. And I'll just write it up for good measure. So when we did a proportional, that was g c of s equals just k. So here is our our three different expressions, and one common form of control is called p i d or p i or p d. And pretty much all that is, is adding these different types of control together. So basic idea is that PID control, so proportional integral derivative control, would simply be 
the addition of these three different controls together. So in the, if we jump into the Laplace domain, it would simply be k plus, and I usually you qualify if there's multiple coefficients of k, you can say kp for proportional, and then ki for integral, is 1 over s, plus kd for derivative, s. So this would be your transfer function for a PID control. Similarly, if you wanted to do PI, it would simply be just the first two, and PD, you can follow the, the general recipe for that. And then you could take this and put it back into, and now you have the control transfer function and you know the plant transfer function, and you can figure out the transfer function for the total loop using the equation that we learned for the closed loop feedback transfer function. So this is, these are the basics, and then next we're gonna kinda play with these and see how we can change these values to help uh, change the system dynamics. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave it here.